Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about chronic watery diarrhea. Now, chronic diarrhea, I like to define it by more than three loose bowel movements in four or more weeks. Now, chronic watery diarrhea can be divided into four different categories. One is secretory, two is osmotic, three is motility related, and four is inflammatory. In today's video, we're just going to be focusing on secretory and osmotic diarrhea and the difference between those two because this is a very high yield topic. So let's first talk about secretary diarrhea. First, we'll talk about the pathogenesis of it because once you make sense of the pathogenesis, everything else here will make sense to you. So in secretary diarrhea, you will have this constant secretion of both water and electrolytes into the lumen of the GI tract. Now, the source of this constant secretion could be three different things. You could be having a neuroendocrine tumor releasing a large amount of hormones or you could be having an infection such as bacterial, protozoal or viral infection that release certain toxin that can cause this secretion or you could be taking certain medication or have a certain pathology that leads to a heavy inflammatory state in the GI tract that leads to a release of large amount of cytokines or inflammatory substances leading to this secretion of the watery diarrhea. So in secretory diarrhea, in short summary, you have this constant efflux of both water and electrolytes could be coming from either one of these categories of pathology. Now, there is a, re there is a reason why I say constant. These patients have diarrhea day and night, ongoing, in large amount, like over a liter per day, and is not just water but also electrolytes that are important in your body so these patients will commonly have electrolyte deficiency hypokalemia hyponatremia and hypochloremia uh, are common as well now no matter if these patients are fasting or not the pathology will always be there the, these patients tumor will always be there the infection will always be there so despite what their fasting state is the diarrhea will persist. And examples of that, we already kind of touched base uh, on that in the, when we were talking about the pathogenesis, but examples of that, neuroendocrine tumors such as carcinoid, VIPoma, gastrinoma, certain malignancies, toxin-producing infection, and the common one that the board examination asks you about is enterotoxin E. coli, or ETEC, commonly common cause of traveler's diarrhea. They could also ask you about a patient who come from a developing country. These patients tend to have cholera. Or they, can, uh, they could be children. And common example of secretary diarrhea in children is rotavirus. And the last but not least, they could be having any protozoan infection, especially if they were out in the water. So, other example of secretory diarrhea, you could, you could also commonly see it in bile acid malabsorption. And these patients, usually they just had a bowel resection and uh, due to this surgery, they would have an accumulation of bile acids in their GI tract and this bile acid would cause a heavy inflammatory state and thus uh, secretory diarrhea. This is actually um, heavily missed in um, you know in clinical practice um, the last but not least medications uh, as I mentioned some medications are notorious of causing heavy inflammation in the GI tract such as colchicine or chemotherapy now as I mentioned secretary diarrhea it is the bad one it's the severe form remember S secretary stands for the severe form The milder one is osmotic, and it starts with an O for ordinary. That's an easy way for you to remember. Now, in osmotic diarrhea, I like to remember it as an indigestion problem. These patients usually have problem absorbing either sugar or fat or any nutrients that are important in their body. 
And once these nutrients, the fat or the sugar, reach to the lumen of the GI tract, they will act as osmotically active substances, causing a heavy osmotic gradient favoring the influx of water into the lumen of the GI tract, and thus causing the diarrhea. Now, this osmosis will only draw water, but not electrolytes, and it won't be in large amount, as, not as much as what you see in secretary diarrhea, so it will usually be less than a liter per day, and because you don't have any efflux of electrolytes, electrolyte deficiency, you rarely see it in those patients, and if you fast, and if you don't ingest these nutrients, the diarrhea will actually improve, and that's a major difference between the two. Examples of that, you could be having, uh, you could see it in lactose intolerance patient, patient with undigested sugar, such as fructose intolerance patient, sorbitol, which you commonly um, find it in sweeteners, patients with fat malabsorption, such as patient with chronic pancreatitis, or patients who uh, commonly or heavily taking laxatives, they can have osmotic diarrhea as well. So that is it. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, which is extremely important for your board examination, they like to ask about it a lot, is osmotic gap. You have to remember this equation. 290 minus 2 times stool sodium plus stool potassium. Now, in secretary diarrhea, remember I told you you have excretion of large amount of electrolytes so that in your stool you'll have a large amount of sodium and potassium in it so that this number right here will be extremely high and it will be extremely high and it's a negative number so that your osmotic gap will be extremely low less than 50 usually however in osmotic diarrhea you won't have as much of excretion of sodium and potassium in your stool so this number will be less negative and your osmotic gap thus will be elevated at more than 125. So remember this equation, they commonly ask it in your board examination. To recap for all of this, remember secretary starts with an S, which is the severe form. It's the one that has large amount of diarrhea with electrolyte deficiency and persists despite fasting state. And that is the opposite in what you see in osmotic diarrhea and remember the examples because they ask about it in board examination as well. That is it for today's video. Hope that was helpful. Thanks everyone for watching.